2,000 years after the departure of Jesus the Christ. The prophets are back to teach the real Jews, the 12 tribes of Israel, their true nationality. This is their campaign. You know, because remember something. We live in 2019, the year 2019. And in today's time, we still don't know how to get our act together as a nation of people. You understand what I'm saying? So you may have maybe a couple of us who make a million dollars or billions of dollars, but the majority of us are still in a low condition. You feel me? So the Bible is going to give you something. So it helps you understand the times you're living in. Read that. Jeremiah 17 verse 4. And thou, even thyself, shalt discontinue from thine heritage. So, Brother Bradley, what does it mean to have a heritage? What does it mean to have a heritage? What does that mean? That's a big word. What does the word heritage mean? Sister, you listening? What is a heritage? Brother, right there, what is a heritage? What is that? What is a heritage? Huh? Okay, your background. I like that. What else? So when it talks about a background, what does it mean to have, like what consists of a background? What does that consist of? Sister, you listening? What does it mean to have a heritage? You said a background. What does that mean? A heritage. What does it mean to have a heritage? Okay. Get that real quick. So book of Sabah, or Ecclesiasticus and Apocryphal, chapter 17, verse 11. Beside this, he gave them knowledge and the law of life for inheritance. So the Bible says that God gave us a law as an heritage. That's right. You understand? So That's God right. gave us a law as a heritage. You understand that, sister? So when it comes to a heritage, he said it's law. Things that we're supposed to use to uphold who we are as a people. Now, it won't matter if we were given laws if we don't know we're supposed to follow them. So, sister, do you see yourself on that side right there? It has a list of the names of who we are in this world and who God calls them. You understand that, sister, with the security, the plane jacket on? What do you see yourself? You said Levi. Well, Haitian, so-called Haitian. That's the tribe of Levi. Sister, what do you see yourself? called Puerto Ricans. How far can we go to know who these people are today? How far can we go? Not, mm, what, like, not too far. You know, what is it, uh, what's that man's name? The guy who sings the, the salsa music. That's, that's, that's all we know. Hector LeBeau, or Romeo Santos. Tito Puentes. Tito Puentes. Who, what, what is that? So what is it that we can go back to so we can really know how we were as a people? is for us to be men and the women to be women. But today, you see the confusion. Brother Bradley, don't run. You said something. You said that you have friends around you. So your friends have to understand what they are to do too. And you too, sister. What's your name? Carol. Sister Carol. Because in today's world, like I was saying before, there's so many influences around us that telling us to go here, go, go there, go there. So what Christ said in John 8, 32, one more time, hold that. John 8 verse 32, it's important for us to understand who our people are and what we have to do to change. So get John 8 verse 32 one more time. The book of John chapter 8 verse 32. 
2 and ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free so brother carol brother excuse me brother sister carol and brother bradley the bible says truth shall set you free so when you go to psalms 111 psalms 119 verse 142 when you go to that it tells you what you need for truth so what it is that we need, because Bradley, like I said, you're at a young age where there's a lot of things going on around you. And you may think that, you know what, this is cool, that's cool. But if you don't know who you are, people can be able to mislead you every time. You feel me? So let's go to that. Psalms 119 verse 142. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness. And thy law is the truth. So God says his laws are the truth. So sisters listening, passing by, God says his laws are the truth. So if we're, we proclaim ourselves to be men and women of God, we should all be able to sit down and read what the Bible says. Yes, Isn't right. that right? If we all claim to so be Christians, men of the anointed or women of the anointed one, we should all be able to sit and listen to what the Bible has for us to do and what it says. That's so Sister right. Carol, now get Deuteronomy 22 verse 5 real quick. And Brother Bradley, because Bradley, you're young and you're old enough to realize that there's a lot of boredom going on in your school. There's a lot of, I know when the young brothers I talk to, they say, oh, we pass around naked pictures of sisters in your school. So not all your school, not all you. But there's website where they do that. Those things happen in these high schools. Now a lot of our parents don't want to talk about our dress. But we the Israelites, we're going to address it. You understand that? We are going to address all the sins that go on in our community so we can fix them. Because that's what Christ is. He's a builder. So we're going to build. Let's go. Mm -hmm. Deuteronomy chapter 22 verse 5. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. So the Bible says a woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Apparently I see you listening. A woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Continue. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. It says neither shall a man put on a woman. You understand, sister? A woman shall not wear that which pertains to a man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. That's very true, sister. That's very true. That's what the Bible says. So let's continue. What, what, what does that mean? For all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. So sister, you hear that? So understand that. God says us wearing, a man wearing women's clothes and a woman wearing men's clothes, he calls it abomination. So when you look at today's world, what's something that women wear that men also wear? to do dress up in women's clothes. That is true. Check this out. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. So the Bible says a woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. So when you look around today, what's something that everybody's wearing? We all wearing the same thing. What is it? Bradley, what is it? What is it that men wear today that women are also wearing? Pants! 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 So when you, you I'm not dressing like women and women are dressing like men now check something out the Bible does not condone them. the Bible does not condone those things because let's go you can do that get that check this out sister God has judgments for everything and look what he says about that it's the book of Zephaniah chapter 1 verse 8 
and it shall come to pass in the day of the Lord's sacrifice that I will punish the princes and the king's children and all such as are clothed with strange apparel. So the Bible says we will be judged for wearing strange apparel. You understand that, brother, Pastor? Because I'm a, you're older brother. Does your granny, does she used to wear pants? A lot of us, your umbrellas, maybe a couple years back, a lot of them wear pants. A lot of them wear dresses. It wasn't until they came here is when they started to assimilate and change the things that they love, they learned from back then. So, because remember, sister, remember that. The Bible gives us how to direct our lives. So, why is it in today's world, we can read that where it says a woman's not supposed to wear pants and a man's supposed to wear a dress. And we look at that, we're like, that's evil. Why would God say that? What has changed? You said it's a new era. But get this real quick. Malachi 3 verse 6. You said it's a new era. Before you get that, let me ask you. What's your name again, sister? Carol. Carol. Uh, give me Romans chapter 3. Uh, I got a question for you, right? Because we reading this to you. What does this have to do with you? What does the Bible have to do with you and everybody else that we're reading? Because they might ask. Everybody has a life. Yes. But watch this. It's a little bit more important to you than it is to a, a lot of people. Watch, and I'm going to show you why. Watch this. It's the book of Romans, chapter 3, verse 1. What advantage then have the Jew? The Bible is saying, what advantage has the Jew? The Jews are the people on that sign. The Israelites have an advantage over all the other nations. Right. Listen. Or oh, what profit is there of circumcision? What profit is there of the law? He just read to you in the law that the woman shouldn't wear pants. Is there an advantage in that? Yes, for the Jew, for the Israelite. Watch. Much every way, deeply, because there unto them were committed the oracles of God. The oracles of God is the words of this Bible. This Bible was given to you, your forefathers. Only the people on that side. The fact that the nations use it as a religious book, that does not make it a religious book. It is a personal record book for the Israelites. That's right. Who are the Israelites? The blacks and Hispanics. Right. The Native American Indians are the Israelites the Bible speaks of. That's right. The reason we are here is to bring that knowledge to the people. Now, do we hate other races? No. Our purpose is to bring back the Bible to the people of the Bible. That's our purpose. To bring us back to living righteously. All our people are in a lower state. Why? Because we go against God. We go against God. So guess what? Who fills the ghettos? Blacks and Hispanics. Because we go against God. Who gets gunned down in the streets? Blacks and Hispanics, because we go against God. Who's filled up diseases? Blacks and Hispanics, because we go against God. Right. Read that again. Much every way. What a time. For the Romans chapter 3 verse 1. What advantage then have the Jew? Or what profit is there of circumcision? So our people are walking around not knowing that they have an advantage over everyone else because of the lowest state they're in. We are walking around living as, as they call us, niggas and spicks. Because society says we are. We are in the ghettos living like li niggas and spicks because that's where niggas and spicks live. But guess what? There is more to us. We have an advantage over every other race. We are the Israelites. The laws of God are for us. And if we keep them, we will, the other nation will see that we are great. Give me that in Deuteronomy. Advantages. Wouldn't you want an advantage? Brothers and sisters, wouldn't you want an advantage? Just a little bit? If you go for a job, wouldn't you want a little bit of an advantage to know that you're going to get that job? But we don't have that. We don't have that. Our address tells us if we're going to get the job or not. 
If we live in a certain area, we might not get that job. If we have a certain name, we might not get that job. This is reality. This is reality that I'm speaking. You understand? It happens to us. It happens to our brothers and sisters. It's reality. You understand, sister? We are not favored amongst these nations. We are not. But we are favored in God's eyes. That's right. We are his chosen people. Bring it out. And is it any other top um, nation's fault that we're in the position? No, it's ours. We're the ones that are breaking God's laws. We're the ones that are breaking the laws of the land. Should we be in this position? Yes, we deserve it. But should we stay? No. No. God says don't steal. God says thou shall not kill. If we keep those laws, we will be favored. Watch. It's the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 7, verse 6. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. God calls us holy. We are separate. We are holy unto him. You understand that, sister? Just listen for a minute. You understand? We are holy. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. God says we are special to him. God says we are above all other nations. That's what God says. This society shows that we're not. We show this society that we're not. We do that to ourselves. Why do men wear their pants all the way down here? Don't they know that it doesn't look right to other nations? Don't they know that we're not going to walk into a job with our pants down here and get a job? Why do our men put tattoos all over their face? Are we going to get a job with that? God says we are holy. we got to be separate. You understand? You have a question? Yes. Um, who Jesus is? Jesus is a black man, sister. Jesus was a black man and he is a black man today. That's what the Bible says. That's what God says. He's a black man. Society has given us a white image. Is that correct? Everywhere you go, you see a white image, but it's not biblical. You understand that, sister? It's not biblical. Our job is to let our people know that they gotta follow God's laws. They gotta follow the words of the Bible. The words of the Bible. Where are you from? Jamaica? Where? South Africa. Is that in the Bible? Can you find South Africa in the Bible? Where does God call you? Is African American in the Bible? What does God call them? Chinese. Is the Chinese in the Bible? They are. But what does God call them? It's in the book. Our job is to teach this book as it is written. To edify our people on who they are and how they should be living. You ever seen the Arab man cover all, the woman cover all her body? You know why she does that? That's a tradition of her people. The Arabs, that's what they wear. The Chinese have a tradition. The black man have no tradition. Because they change their tradition every year. Every five years they have a different style. God gives you a style. God gives us a, 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 a custom that we should follow. It's only written in this book. Sister, hold on, hold on. We've talked to you many times before. You've cursed us out many times before, and we understand. But I'm telling you, God is a black man. You're an Israelite, and you've got to follow God's laws. You understand? You understand what I'm saying? What is your question? Well, you gotta stop smoking crack. You gotta stop doing drugs. You understand? That's how you fix your life. Today you wanna stop. Tomorrow you're gonna curse us out because you're high. Stop doing dope. Stop smoking weed. It does not help you. You understand, sister? Fix your life. And God will fix your life in this society. You cannot just say, I, want, I don't want to go to hell. And you're smoking weed and you're doing all manner of wrong. You understand, sister? Make an effort to set your life in order. First of all, you've heard us teach before, correct? What do we teach? 
we teach that the blacks and Hispanics and Native Americans are the Israelites. And because we are the Israelites, we have to follow God. You have to follow God, sister. You understand? Stop with the drugs. It's not helping your life. It's not, it's not easy. It's in my head. Sister, do you, do you purchase it? You have to purchase it, right? Uh, yeah. Uh, it's yes. yes, it's still there, but you've got... Yeah. This Bible will help you. Uh, oh, well, well, sister, you gotta listen. You understand, and you gotta dedicate your life to what's right. And the friends that you keep, you gotta move away from them. They're not helping you either. That's right. The people around you are not helping you to get away from drugs. You understand, sis? Look at this. That's a black image. Does it look like you? The people of the Bible were righteous people. They were never hooked on drugs. We got to start molding our lives according to biblical people. You understand, sister? Seth, come back. You said, you said you're from South Africa. When you look at South Africa, get Deuteronomy 28 verse 43 real quick. Deuteronomy 28 verse 43. Because remember, the Bible talks about evil being pronounced to us. Evil coming to us for breaking God's commandments. Now, in South Africa, they had the apartheid with Nelson Mandela and everything like that. The Bible has something to say about that. Get Deuteronomy 28 and verse 43. Watch this. Now, let me ask you this. Were the so-called Caucasians that came to South Africa, were they native to that land? They were, right? Watch this. It's the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 43. The stranger that is within thee shall get up above thee very high. So the Bible says the stranger, the other people who are not your people, will get above you very high. Continue. And thou shalt come down very low. And the people who are, who are native to that land will come down very low. Continue. And he shall lend to thee. And thou shalt not lend to him. And it says, he shall lend to you, and he, you will not be able to lend to them. What is that talking about? There's something called colonialism. Colonialism is when another nation of people take occupation of your land, and they sell your goods back to you. That's right. I'm going to repeat that. Read Deuteronomy 28 verse 43. Check this out one more time. The stranger that is within thee shall get up above thee very high. The Bible says the strangers, the other nations, which are not your people, will get above you very, very high. Continue. And thou shalt come down very low. And you will come down very low. To the point where you can't even live in that land anymore. You have to leave your native land. Continue. He shall lend to thee. He shall lend to you. Continue. And thou shalt not lend to him. And you won't be able to lend to them. So now when you look at the conditions in South Africa, is that true? That's very true. So what is that letting you know? The people of South Africa, they're the Israelites. There is a remnant of our people in the continent of Africa. Right. And we have to understand that they fit the curses that God pronounced against them. Because God, what the officer was letting us know, God gave us laws, statutes, commandments. And if we broke them, evil was going to come against us. Like, sister, when you look, it's not only South Africa. When you look at Jamaica, Haiti, they have fertile land. They have fertile land to farm, but they still have to get crops from other nations. Does that make sense? How is it that you live on an island that brings forth mangoes and fruits and all these different things, livestock, but you're buying, you're getting imports from other people? How are you not self-sufficient? Does that make sense? So God is letting you know, so they get Deuteronomy 28 verse 15. Watch this. Sister, what, are you guys from the islands? You guys from Jamaica? Check this out. Why is it you guys have to come here, but when you guys are in your own land, you can't find work? These are things you have to address. Don't think that it's normal to be working minimum wage and living day to day, living in poverty. They call us the working poor. How can you keep working and still stay poor? Don't think that it's to get out of captivity. These things are not easy for us to do, but we must do them to change. We must change our conditions as
nation of people. It's not going to be done. Don't wait for the other nations to save you. Christ said, ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. That's right. That's what God said, and that's who we believe. So if we're going to change, we have to go to what God has to say. We have to. No one else is going to change our conditions but God. And, it's gonna, and if you don't get it, get Hosea chapter 5 verse 15. Because we don't get it. We don't get it. So we have to go to what the Bible has to say. Hosea chapter 5 and verse 15. Because you have to know who your God is. Listen up brothers and sisters. You have to know how your God works. You can't keep going to your church. Sister, what's your name? Come close. Sister Elizabeth. Hosea, the book, the book of Hosea. Oh, the first one I read was Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 43. So check this out, brothers and sisters. Check this out. We're going to the book of Hosea. Uh, the book of Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 43. So check this out, sister listening. When you go into the book of Hosea, God lets you know how he deals. Because this is the problem. You may think this is a little thing, but I, you see this image right there? You see that? You see this? This has done so much damage, and we don't, we still don't get it. We still don't get it. So what God has to let you know, let him, let him tell you what he's about. Get Hosea 5 verse 15. The book of Hosea chapter 5 verse 15. So you understand that, young brothers? This is what God is about. Check this out. I will go and return to my place. The Bible says he will go and return to his place. Till they acknowledge their offense. So what we're supposed to do is acknowledge our offense. We can't be going through all this for no reason. How is it you live in your land of South Africa and there's other people thriving more than you? That you have to leave your own native land and then come here and work for minimum wage. Bring it up. How does that work? Is that your, is that your land? Is that your land? How, how does these things change? Let's go to Hosea 5.15. One more time. One, one, one time. Do they understand that? Because we have to make changes as a nation of people. And you being an older man, you must be able to track and direct the youth coming up. That's your duty. That is your duty as a man. So you must change those things. Hosea chapter 5 verse 15. I will go and return to my place. So the Bible says I will go and return to my place. Understand. That will teach you with knowledge and understanding. You understand that, sister? 
God is supposed to teach us with knowledge and understanding. That's right. That's what God commanded us to do. He did not come here to give you a sweet song. I don't want you to think that's what this is. He did not come here to give you a sweet song. So let's get the knowledge that we're supposed to have that's going to change us. Check this out. Malachi 2 verse 7. Yeah. For the priest's lips should keep knowledge. So you're talking about the priest. The priest or the pastor's lips should keep knowledge. You understand that older brother too? It says the priest and the pastor's lips are supposed to keep knowledge. And what's that knowledge that they're supposed to keep? And they should seek the law at his mouth. And they should seek the laws of God at his mouth. So when you see your pastor or priest telling you it's all good in Jesus, run! Run! The Bible does not say it's all good in Jesus. He says, keep my commandments and live. That's right. That's what the Bible says. So check this out. Deuteronomy 22 verse 5. Because it said the priest lives should keep knowledge and you should seek the law at his mouth. Daniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.